So, I was in a debate this Saturday with uh, Godless Cranium, Shannon Q, and uh, genetically modified skeptic, Drew, as he's known. Look, I'm not just talking that their way is more pleasant and it's more fun and enjoyable. I'm saying it's a hundred times more effective. I've watched their videos. You know, the most aggressive out of those three is probably Godless Cranium, but even he... And so we hired, I've got it written down, GFK, this research group, they called 900,000 people, random digital dial, had 70,000 conversations, boiled it down to a list of 18 to 44 year olds, 1,000 people, and male, female, young, white, black, old, rich, young, You can everybody. take your pick. There's infinite pick genders and races now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Etc. cetera, Bucket, everybody, number one, same thing. The main objection was intolerance. Okay. That Christianity is an intolerant religion. And then I, I wrote it down. Well, I actually looked up the poll you're talking about. And while intolerance is the number one reason given, there are several more. For example, you'll see there in the number eight spot that 26% of respondents think Christianity is about making money and not religion. Surely someone worth $2.5 million would understand that. And I don't think that has anything to do with the Christian faith being intolerant. I seem to remember Jesus being quite intolerant to the rich, actually. Go figure. In the fourth spot, we have many Christians are hypocrites. Again, not much to do with intolerance, unless you're saying we should be more tolerant of hypocrites, or we're looking at specific Christians who, for example, might say Jesus commanded them to love everyone, but who also choose to call same-sex couples abominations. You know, things like that. Number seven is pretty broad, but again, doesn't necessarily have anything to do with intolerance. I mean, I'm an atheist, and number seven would be fairly close to something I might answer, since I don't share the same core belief that the Christian faith tells me I should, which is the belief in God and a risen Christ. And since 9% of the respondents seem to be atheists like myself, it's likely a good proportion of them decided to go that route. I do find it rather concerning that 65% of the respondents believe in devils and angels. Sweet Jesus, that number is way too high. But at least we could take some solace in the fact that 73% believe in evolution, although I would like that number to be much higher. A quarter of the population still denying evolution is at this point extremely embarrassing. But you did say the main objection, and it is the main objection. My personal objection would be it isn't true and there's no good evidence for your position, but that's just me. Now, he's about to read from his own poll. Let's see how many he accurately represents. I'll highlight in red what he gets wrong and yellow what he gets right. To be fair to Mark, he does get a few partially correct, but instead of reading the actual response, which would allow him and Crowder the opportunity to discuss the nuances of each position, he just decides to oversimplify it and in the long run, misrepresent the overall larger picture you might get if dealing with each response accurately. Uh, it then plays itself out in eight arenas. So the number two issue was sexuality. Number three was politics. Number four was morality or hypocrisy. Number five was spirituality. Number six was gender. Number seven was scripture or authority. Number eight is economics or greed. And number nine is counseling or, or relevance and irrelevance. And, and what our research showed, massive project. So I just wanted to bang the point home about how he oversimplifies the possibilities with each question to fit his personal objection. I'm not going to go through each of them, but I'll use number six as an example because I found it particularly laughable. He takes the sentence, not all people are created equal in the Christian faith, and immediately jumps to the conclusion that they're talking about gender when it could mean a whole host of other things, such as comparisons between those who believe and don't believe, same-sex couples and heterosexual couples, those who get 80 years to decide whether they believe in God and those who get 10 before they pass away, and so forth. Mark, if you're going to write them down, then there's no excuse for getting them wrong. Just read each question as written instead of putting your own spin on it. There is only one objection, and that's Christianity's intolerant, and then it plays itself out in different arenas. Right. And you'll see that blowing up and trending on social media and such, where it's a political issue or a moral issue or a spiritual issue or a gender issue or a sexuality issue. But ultimately, those are just like eight octagons that the same fight keeps happening over the issue of intolerance. And that's the primary objection from everyone. And we've already gone through why that isn't the case. There are several objections and not all of them have to do with intolerance. You'd like to simplify it down to that because it's easier to digest and you can craft simpler talking points to address it, but you're not doing your side any favors. 
if you really cared about accuracy and trying to make your faith more relevant to the average person, you would take these numbers seriously and try to understand where they're coming from. As long as you keep misrepresenting them, you're not addressing the actual points, and your church, along with many others, will keep making the same mistakes. Or maybe Mark is like a certain visible Twitter personality who doesn't like atheists much, who also seems to think I'm a meanie. Eve Kanainen left a question on a video of mine where I asked why millennials were leaving the church in droves, and she seems to think that Generation Z, those born between 1999 and 2015, are returning to the church. But like almost everything she says on Twitter, her opinions are poorly informed and factually incorrect. Even Christianity Today admits that Generation Z is not returning to the fold, and are in fact more atheistic than previous generations. Quote, Among Gen Z members between 13 and 18 years old, 13% consider themselves atheists, compared to just 6% of adults overall. Meanwhile, 59% of Gen Z identifies as Christian, compared to 68% of adults. Only 1 in 11 teens is considered to be, by Barna, to be an engaged Christian, a category the research organization uses for those whose beliefs and practices are shaped by their faith. End quote. I'll leave a link in the description box below, but if you read through it, you'll also notice that Generation Z also mirrors some of the concerns expressed in Mark's survey. Is that uh, Christian belief structure is just simply intolerant, therefore it's unacceptable. And how, how do you deal with that criticism? Because the, the reality is, it is intolerant of some behaviors, of some practices that are self-destructive, but that doesn't, it's, it, it, it's, it's, first off, it's not even comparable to, let's say, some religions like Islam, which we talk about a lot. You're not lopping hands yeah. off. The video wouldn't be complete without some whataboutery. <laughs> We aren't discussing Islam. We're discussing your intolerant religion and the damage it does to people around the world. But how do you how do you balance that again with being authentic, saying, "Well, okay, this is true. The, these these are closed-handed rules. These are open-handed rules," uh, and explaining that to someone who just blankets you with intolerant. Well, and I would say, uh, first of all, the intolerant is on the left and the right. I yes. mean, it's it doesn't matter you know who you check for your political persuasion that it exists on the left and the right and what we found is actually the dictionary definition of tolerance has changed it used to be you think i'm wrong i think you're wrong we sort of endure with one another the dictionary definition has now changed to we're both right and we celebrate one another not even close mark the definition hasn't changed whatsoever Tolerance simply means the ability or willingness to tolerate the existence of opinions or behavior that one dislikes or disagrees with. Where in that definition do you see the words, we're both right? I don't think flat earthers are right. I certainly don't celebrate their wrongness. Yet I'm not saying we should kill them or take their right to believe nonsense away from them. In other words, I tolerate them. And Crowder will just sit there and nod like a dummy, even though he likely knows full well that what his guest just said is factually incorrect. Right. Which is what you see in social media. Unless I wave every flag and march in every parade, I'm intolerant. Right. And right? Wrong. No one is saying you have to march in every parade or wave any flag. You don't have to do any of those things. It's not like we're going to send the secret march and flag-waving police to monitor your every move. Now, if you're going to publicly advocate for taking human rights away from people based on their sexuality or skin color or something then yeah, you're going to get called intolerant. And so, you know, really what we have now is a, a change to where, um, unless you agree with everyone that everyone is right and everything is okay, you're intolerant. And the truth is, the God of the Bible is loving and loving is more important than tolerating because tolerance says there's nothing wrong or needs to change with you. Love says, I care about you and I want a relationship, but I want my love to change you. And if that doesn't work, I'll burn you for eternity and roast marshmallows over your stinking, melting flesh. We've already gone over the definition of tolerance and you're just plain wrong. And no one is saying you have to agree with what everyone says. Hell, that's impossible because unless you hid yourself away from the world, you'd eventually run into person A who disagrees with person B. And in order to agree with everyone, you'd have to simultaneously agree with two opposing ideas. Anyway, let's skip ahead to the part where Crowder asks Mark for advice on being a man. Here's the false machismo sort of archetype, and then what a positive male role model would be. What would you say to young men out there? Well, that's a layup. His name is Jesus, man. I mean, the most influential person in the history of the world, more books written about, more songs sung to, more lives devoted toward anyone who has lived in the history of the world. And so you're looking at the most significant person is a young male. Who got himself nailed to a cross. Not sure that's the best role model right there. You'd also have to convince everyone that you're the son of God and that you needed to die to appease yourself for the sins you created in the first place. And that's a tall order. Anyhow, that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and cheers.
I'm bringing Jesus back, yep. These atheists don't know how to act, yep. I think Satan better watch his back, yep. So just keep praising him and don't you slack, yep. Take him to the cross, the Bible, babe. You see these verses, that's how I got saved. The Holy Ghost is what I crave. It's just that Jesus makes me feel this way. Take him to the cross. Come here, child, cause Jesus wants you. Come to the cross where he bought you. G-O-D, now you can see. Pray for me, I'll pray for thee. See who you hanging with? Go ahead, be going with them. Look at those sins, now it's forgiven. He'll make you smile, go ahead, walk with them. Come here, child, don't be wild. Get your bowing out, we gotta go to church. Get your bowing out, we gotta go to church. Mm -hmm.